Hello and welcome back to CS631 Advanced Programming in the Unix Environment. After having discussed all the different aspects of the struct stat in our previous videos, many students eventually stumble upon the type of file that so far we have not yet discussed, the so-called whiteout file. And because what the hell is a whiteout file is an actually frequently asked question, I figured I'd better prepare a quick video to explain. So let's dive right in. Remember this slide from week 3, segment 1? We talked about how the struct stat provides us with all the meta information of a file, including the st mode, which includes the file permissions together with the file type. We then noted the different types of files we might encounter, ranging from the regular file or the directory to a socket or a symbolic link. But we didn't mention this other type of file that you might encounter on some Unix versions, depending on whether the OS supports a certain type of file system. It's called a whiteout file, and it does… what exactly? In short, a whiteout file is used to hide a lower layer file when the corresponding upper layer file in the union mount has been removed. Okay, but what is a union mount? Let's illustrate. Suppose you have a directory like this, with a subdirectory and a few files. And you also have a second directory like this. Using a union mount, you can combine these two directories to make the joint contents available in a single place. To do that, you effectively mount one directory on top of the other, thereby yielding the union of both the directory's contents, showing both subdirectory 1, subdirectory 2, and all the files 1 through 9. So that's pretty neat. But what happens if you have two directories like this? Note that here, in directory 2, we have a subdirectory and a file 3, just as we do in directory 1. So what happens if we union mount these two directories? Here's what that might look like. We more clearly see the concept of the union here. Subdirectory, which exists in both directory 1 and directory 2, will contain file 5 from directory 2, as well as files 1 and 2 from directory 1, while the other files are available in the union directory as well. But note that file 3 made available here is file 3 from directory 2, as that is in the top layer of the union mount. We mounted directory 2 on top of directory 1. So directory 2's file 3 covers up file 3 present in the lower layer. Now suppose we went ahead and removed file 3 within this directory. That would delete file 3 from directory 2. But we know that in this lower layer over here, in directory 1, we still have a file called file 3. But we just deleted file 3. So if now the file from the lower layer appeared, that would be rather confusing. So we need a way to cover up the file in the lower layer, to hide its existence when viewed inside the union mount. For that, we deploy a whiteout file. That is, the union file system realizes that the upper layer has removed a file still present in the lower layer and, on the fly, generates a whiteout file to hide it. Once you unmount the union file system, you are left with your two original directories, and the whiteout file disappears. At least, that's the theory. Let's take a look at what this looks like in practice. We start by taking a look at the manual page for Mount Union, which describes exactly what we just talked about. You mount one directory on top of the other, so that the contents of both become visible. Here I've prepared two directories under slash whiteout to give this a spin. A lower directory and an upper directory, which will mount on top of the lower directory to create the union. Here in the upper directory, we find the following files. Two directories, a few regular files, and some files in the subdirectories. Now, 
In the lower directory, we have a similar set of files. Note that we have some files here that are named the same as in the upper directory. Zero, file 1, file 2, and file 3 found in the dir subdirectory. The files file 4 and file 5 are distinct as they are found in differently named subdirectories. Now let's look at file 1 in each directory. In the lower directory, it conveniently tells us that this is file 1 in the lower directory and vice versa in the upper. Ok, so now let's create the union mount. For that, we run the mount union command and change into the resulting directory. Note that we had created a symlink named union pointing to the lower directory. The union mount placed the upper directory on top of the lower directory, but using the union symlink makes it more obvious to remind us where we are. Ok, so now running ls-l in this directory, we see the expected union of all the files. We see dir, file 1 and 2, as well as the lower and upper files and directories. And yes, inside the subdir, we also find the union of the two layers, file 3 as well as the upper and lower files 3. Now, if we cat file 1 here, we see that we are looking at the file 1 version from the upper directory, just as for file 2 and dir slash file 3. while dir slash lower file 3, of course, is the file from the lower directory, and dir slash upper file 3 from the upper directory. So we are seeing as promised the union of these files with the upper layer covering the lower layer for files that are named the same. Now. Let's look at file 1 and see what happens when we remove it. There. No surprise, the file is no longer present. And if we look separately in the upper directory, we of course also don't find it there. Now let's have a second look at our files here. This time we're using the w flag to ls to enable listing of whiteout files. And then we see that there appears this file named file1, which is of type w and has zero hard links and zero bytes file size. We can't remove this file, and it really isn't there. It only exists in the union mount to cover up the still existing file1 from the lower directory. Next, We'll unmount the union file system again and look at the files in the lower directory. Note that in the lower directory, file 1 still exists. But it no longer exists in the upper directory. Our file removal in the union took place in the upper directory, but left the file in the lower directory untouched.
Ok, now let's mount the union file system once more. Here we are. If we now edit file 1 in the union directory, we will end up creating it in the upper layer. And we will obviously no longer have a whiteout file in place. Unmounting the union file system again, we see that file 1 in the lower directory remains once again untouched, while the newly created file does indeed remain in the upper directory even after the union file system has been unmounted. Oh, and one more thing. Notice that here in the upper directory we suddenly find a directory named lowerdir that looks just like the one from the lower directory. In there we have two files, but here in the upper version of lower deer there are no files. What happened? Let's remove the directory to see how we ended up with it being in our upper directory in the first place. And after removing it we again mount the union file system. And check. Nope, no lower deer here. So that's good. Our union looks just like we'd expect, as shown here on the right. If we now look in the upper directory, we find that all of a sudden the lower deer has reappeared. But in the upper directory there are no files in it, while in the union directory there are the files that we expect from the lower directory. Let's take another look at the manual page to see if that helps us understand what's going on here. As we know, it tells us that file names are looked up in the upper layer and then in the lower layer, but also notes that if there is no entry in the upper layer, then a shadow directory will be created. And that is what we are seeing here. These shadow directories are created the first time you are accessing the lower layer directories. So traversing a union mount will then create the whole hierarchy in the upper layer, as noted here in the manual page as well. Alright, so let's recap. Union mounts, if supported by the OS in question, allow you to combine directories as if layering one directory on top of another. As we've just seen, so-called shadow directories may be created for any directories not found in the upper layer. If a file is present in both layers, the upper layer version effectively covers up the bottom layer, and removing such a file then leads to the creation of a so-called whiteout file, the thing that started this whole discussion. The dash w flag to ls lets us see whiteout files and we can test a given file struct stat st mode for this file type by using the s is white macro, similar how we use macros to test for different file types. Support for such whiteout files and union file systems is however operating system dependent. The examples I gave here are of course from our reference platform, NetBSD, and other Unix versions may or may not support these in the same or different way, so make sure to check your manual pages. And there you have it, whiteout files and union mounts. Go ahead, give it a try yourself and write some code to detect and display such files for yourself. Until next time, cheers!